Deseret alphabet. The Deseret alphabet, Deseret, or, is a phonemic English language spelling reform developed between 1847 and 1854 by the Board of Regents of the University of Deseret under the leadership of Brigham Young, the second president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. George D. Watt is reported to have been the most actively involved in the development of the script, as well as being its first serious user. In public statements, Young claimed the alphabet was intended to replace the traditional Latin alphabet with an alternative, more phonetically accurate alphabet for the English language. This would offer immigrants an opportunity to learn to read and write English, he said, the orthography of which is often less phonetically consistent than those of many other languages. Similar experiments have not been uncommon, the most well-known of which is the Shavian alphabet. Young also prescribed the learning of Deseret to the school system stating it will be the means of introducing uniformity in our orthography, and the years that are now required to learn to read and spell can be devoted to other studies. During the alphabet's heyday between 1854 and 1869, books, newspapers, street signs and correspondence used the new letters, but despite heavy and costly promotion by the early LDS church, the alphabet never enjoyed prolonged widespread use and has been regarded by historians as a failure. The Deseret alphabet was developed primarily by a committee made up of the university's Board of Regents, members of which included church leaders Brigham Young, Parley P. Pratt and Haber C. Kimball. According to Brigham Young University professor Richard G. Moore, most scholars believe that Watt's contribution to the alphabet was the greatest, Kenneth R. Beasley goes so far as to credit him with planting, the idea of spelling reform in Brigham Young's mind through a phonography class he gave after the death of Joseph Smith which Young attended. In addition, Jules Remy reported that William W. Phelps helped work out the letters. Before they decided on the Deseret alphabet, the attention of the Board of Regents was mostly focused on Pittman-style alphabets, and in April 1847 Brigham Young nearly purchased a lead type to print books using Pittman's orthography. The University of Deseret was incorporated on February 28, 1850, less than three weeks later, on 20th of March, the new Board of Regents began to discuss spelling reform. On November 29, 1853 the committee almost voted on using a slightly modified version of the Pittman orthography, when Willard Richards, who had been deathly ill and missed the debate before the vote, saw the proposed alphabet. Richards was quick to condemn it, saying to the committee Thassa characters, seem like putting old wine into new bottles, I am inclined to think, we shall, throw away all characters that bear much resemblance to the English characters, and introduce an alphabet that is original. These words persuaded Brigham Young and the rest of the committee, and George D. Watt then endeavored to create an original alphabet. Less than two months later, on January 19, 1854, the Board of Regents finally approved the first 38 letter Deseret alphabet. Upon the alphabet's acceptance, its first user was its principal architect, George D. Watt, who began writing the meeting minutes of the early bishops in a cursive form of it in 1854. Almost immediately after its publication, Church members began experimenting with it, and by 1855 travel writers Jules Remy and Julius Brenchley published a chart of the new alphabet which differed heavily from the 1854 version. Some early Mormons, such as the Ailey's Hastings Haskell, began writing their personal journals in the new alphabet. Remy further reported that during his time in Salt Lake City, he saw signs on the street and above shops using the new alphabet. After its approval by the Board of Regents, Brigham Young testified before the Utah Territorial Legislature that the new alphabet should be thoroughly and extensively taught in all the schools. Some teaching in Utah schools did take place, John B. Milner taught the alphabet in Provo, Lehigh, American Fork, and Pleasant Grove, while evening classes were taught in Salt Lake City and Farmington. After several months' practice writing with the new alphabet, Watt wrote to Brigham Young that he was unhappy with it, and proposed a complete overhaul which was never followed up on. Word of the new alphabet soon spread outside Utah, and most press reports in non-Mormon papers were critical. Other writers, however, acquainted with other phonotypic and stenographic alphabets, ranged from neutral descriptions of the new alphabet to praise. Until this point, all the printed material, mostly just charts of the alphabet and its standard orthography equivalents, had been produced with large wooden type, which was not suitable for printing at small sizes. Because the alphabet was wholly unique, no font existed, so in 1857 the Board of Regents appointed Erastus Snow to procure metal type from St. Louis-based font foundry Ledoux and Pierre. However, 
In May 1857 the Utah War began, and Snow left St. Louis to support the Mormon pioneers. During the war, Bladue and Peer kept working on the type, and the punches and matrices were delivered in the winter of 1858. The first use of the new type was to make a business card for George A. Smith, an early Mormon historian. In 1859, with the new type in hand, the Deseret News began printing with it. It would print one piece per issue in the new alphabet, usually a quotation from the Book of Mormon or the New Testament. However, this only lasted for one year, after which the practice stopped, it would start again in May 1864 and stop permanently at the end of that year. Ben Pittman, the brother of Isaac Pittman, was also interested in spelling reform, and by 1864 had published his own orthography, which the Board of Regents considered adopting. However, they ultimately decided not to and used the opportunity to reaffirm their commitment to the Deseret alphabet. Brigham Young blamed the failure of this first attempt at reform on the ugliness of the type developed by Ledoux and Peer, and so he commissioned Russell's American Steam Printing House, a New York City-based font foundry, to design more pleasing type. The result was the Bodoni-esque font, at right, that was us to print all of the books in this period. In an 1868 article, the Deseret News wrote that the characters, to a person unaccustomed to them, may look strange, but, to the eye to which they are familiar they are beautiful. At least four books were published in the New Alphabet, all transcribed by Orson Pratt and all using the Russell's House font, the first Deseret Alphabet Reader, 1868, the second Deseret Alphabet Reader, 1868, the Book of Mormon, 1869, and a Book of Mormon excerpt called First Nephi Omni, 1869. Considerable non-printed material in the Deseret Alphabet was made, including a replica headstone in Cedar City, Utah some coinage, letters, diaries, and meeting minutes. One of the more curious items found in the Deseret alphabet is an English Hopi dictionary prepared by two Mormon missionaries. It sat unappreciated in handwritten form at the LDS Church Archives until 2014, when Kenneth R. Beasley, a writing system researcher and computer scientist, noticed its significance and transcribed it into standard written English. Despite years of heavy promotion, the Deseret alphabet was never widely adopted. This reluctance was partly due to prohibitive costs. The project had already cost the early church $20,000, with $6,000 going to Pratt as remuneration for his transcription effort and most of the rest going to cutting metal type featuring new alphabet and printing costs. In 1859, Orson Pratt estimated that the cost of supplying all Utah Territory school children with suitable textbooks would be over $5 million U.S. dollars. According to Beasley, Many have written that interest in the Deseret alphabet died with Brigham Young. This, however, isn't true. The alphabet was already regarded as a failure during Young's time. Only 500 copies of the full Book of Mormon translated into the Deseret alphabet sold for two U.S. dollars each, and even Young realized that the venture was too expensive and even the most devout Mormons could not be convinced to purchase and study the Deseret edition books over the books in the traditional orthography. In the winter of 1870, just one year after their publication, advertisements for the Deseret Alphabet books were quietly removed from the Deseret News. Contemporary writers noted that thousands of copies of the 15 U.S. cents and 20 U.S. cents Deseret primers went unsold, and historian Roby Wentz speculated that LDS Church at that time had a cache of the primers in mint condition, which it was slowly selling off, according to him, one such primer sold for $250 inches 1978. The Mormons had planned to use the profits from sale of the earlier books to fund printing of more books, and in anticipation Orson Pratt had already transcribed the Complete Bible, Doctrine and Covenants, and John Jacques' Catechism for Children. Pratt had also prepared an apparent sequel to the primers, the Deseret Phonetic Speller. After the sales failure, however, none of these books were ever published and were thought lost until being rediscovered in a storage area of the LDS Church Archives in Salt Lake City in May 1967. Ralph Vigoda, a reporter for the Philadelphia Inquirer, has speculated that the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad may have contributed to the alphabet's downfall. Non Mormons, not loyal to Brigham Young, became a large part of the city, and without the religious motivation, it would be difficult indeed to get them to learn a new alphabet. In a retrospective piece, historian A.J. Simmons claims that the new railroad doomed the alphabet. According to him, easy access to the whole literature of the English speaking world rendered the alphabet useless. In July 1877, Young tried one more time at a spelling reform, 
ordering lead type designed for the orthography of Ben Pittman, Isaac's brother, with the intention of printing an edition of the Book of Mormon and Doctrine and Covenants using it. Most of the type had arrived by August, but with Young's death, the translation was never undertaken and the type never used. Young's death thus marked the end of the Mormon experimentation with English spelling reforms. Modern digital typography has reduced the costs of typesetting substantially, especially for small print runs. As long as a freely licensed Deseret Alphabet font and a font of the standard orthography have similar inked surface areas, printing a book in the Deseret Alphabet using modern technology would have a similar cost as printing a book in the standard orthography. Film director Trent Harris used the Deseret Alphabet in his 1994 satire of Mormon theology, Plan 10 from Outer Space where it features as an alien language used on a mysterious plaque of collab. During the 1996 Utah Centennial Celebration, an activity book for children was distributed, within which one of the activities was for a child to write their own name in the alphabet. The book says that a child who does this will be the first kid in 100 years to write, their, name in the Deseret alphabet. Also in 1996, Buffalo River Press published a reprint of the Deseret first book, of which only 10,000 were originally printed. The entire Book of Mormon in the Deseret alphabet has been likewise reprinted, as only 500 copies from the original print run exist, and they can sell on eBay for $7,500, as of 2004. In 1997, John Jenkins uploaded a free three part PDF of the so called triple combination, that is, a combined Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price. Beginning around 2007, the Republic of Malaysia, a. 1999, a micronation surrounded on all sides by the state of Nevada, used the Deseret alphabet on some signs to give their territory a more foreign appearance. The official website of the micronation cautions that any former or current use of the alphabet does not imply supportive or adherence to LDS teachings, or, practices. In 2015, the micronation stance towards the alphabet changed. After that date, the alphabet is officially described as a formerly used writing system and not a writing system in current use. John Jenkins has gone on to publish many classic pieces of English literature in the Deseret alphabet, such as Alice in Wonderland, Pride and Prejudice, and The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Owing to the character set's inclusion in Unicode, most of the original books and many of the original manuscripts have been transcribed into plain text, and, when this is not possible due to discrepancies between the Unicode reference glyphs and the documents, LaTeX. The first digital font for the Deseret alphabet, called Deseret, was designed by Greg Carney as part of work he was doing for the LDS Church History Department in 1991. The font was used in an exhibit that year. In August 1995, a cleaned-up, digitized version of the font in use in the Deseret second book was created by Salt Lake City graphic designer Edward Bateman, who made the font and fontographer while working on Plan 10 from Outer Space. Although it is not currently available in Tan, Kenneth R. Beasley purports to have created a metafont, and thus, LaTeX-compatible, font called in 2004. All computers running Microsoft's Windows 7 operating system or newer can display the entire Deseret Alphabet Unicode range as the glyphs are included in Tsugo UI symbol font. Besides maintaining a Deseret input method for Windows, Joshua Erickson, a UCLA alumnus, also maintains a large collection of freeware Unicode fonts fourth alphabet, which he collectively terms the B fonts. There also exist free software fonts for the Deseret Alphabet. Google through its Notosans project, the aim of which is to support all languages with a harmonious look and feel, has also released a Deseret font under the name Notosans Deseret. George Duros maintains a public domain font called Analecta Espertoff as Unicode Fonts for Ancient Scripts project, which supports the Coptic, Gothic, and Deseret scripts. Deseret glyphs are also available in the popular pan Unicode fonts code 2001 and Everson Mono, as a version 5.1.5. Although the Deseret alphabet has letter case, the only difference between the minuscule and majuscule forms is that the majuscule forms are larger. A degree of free spelling is allowed to accommodate dialectal differences in English. For example, in the Deseret edition of the Book of Mormon, the word wherefore is written as, which means that the translator of the book did not exhibit the wine wine merger. Those who do exhibit the merger might instead prefer the spelling to match the pronunciation, or, depending on dialect, perhaps. The alphabet was designed to be able to write all of the vowels used in the dialect spoken in 19th century Utah. 
The vowel inventory has also been attributed to the fact that unlike other American pioneers, the Mormon pioneers were from New England as opposed to the American South. As such, many of the vowels in the Deseret alphabet have since merged in the modern era, they are no longer distinguished in many dialects of English. Speakers who exhibit the father bother merger no longer distinguish, and, and so both father and bother would be written with, as and as opposed to as and. For those with the cot pot merger, and, are no longer distinguished, both cot and cot are is written by them as, in the case of North American English and as, in the case of Scottish English. For those exhibiting both mergers, both would be written. There have been several published versions of the alphabet. Most versions, including the versions used in the Deseret First Book, the Deseret Second Book, the Deseret News and the Book of Mormon, had only 38 letters, but some versions contain two ligatures, eu, and, oi. In place of or, was to be used, in place of. In the February 23, 1859 edition of the Deseret News, the editors announced their approval of the two new letters and eventual intention to use them in the newsletter. However, Due to the hot metal typesetting technology in use at the time, casting the new letters for use would have been a considerable expense, so it was never realized that the Deseret alphabet does not have a distinct symbol for the mid-central vowel, schwa. The lack of a schwa has been cited as the biggest phonological flaw in the alphabet. Because of the lack of a schwa, the author must write the sound that would be used if the word was stressed. For example, the word enough is commonly pronounced, but when it is stressed, as in a declaration of irritation, it is pronounced. The Deseret spelling of the word, reflects that stress pronunciation. If does not have an inherent stress value in a word, as is often the case before, then it is written as. Marion J. Shelton, an early Mormon missionary, proposed the addition of a new glyph to represent the schwa, a simple vertical line of the same height as other Deseret characters with a similar appearance to the Turkish dotless I. The addition of this glyph did not catch on among his contemporaries, however, and no document outside of one's penned by Shelton makes use of it. Shelton used the new glyph in an 1860 letter to Brigham Young reporting on a recently completed mission to the Paiute people. Each letter in the Deseret alphabet has a name, and when a letter is written on its own it has the value of that name. This allows some short words to be written with a single letter, and is called a letter's syllabic value. The most common word in English, the, is written simply, as the letter's name is and that is the stress pronunciation of the word. The consonants with syllabic values are, wu, yi, ha, p, b slash b, t slash t, chi, g, gay, and, the slash the. Syllabic values do not apply within words, although this was formerly the case. In early documents, Watt writes people as with the expectation that readers will interpret the first as, but the second as. This contextual value switching was soon done away with, so in later documents, while B is written, B's is written. In 40 letter versions of the alphabet which include the letter, EU, which represents, the letter when standing alone can be used to represent the word U. The first lesson in the Deseret first book reads simply in the Deseret second book, there is a version of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star on page 19 colon there were two main handwritten forms of the Deseret alphabet, a cursive version and a printed version. Over the lifetime of the alphabet, the cursive form fell out of favor among most users of the alphabet and by 1856 no more cursive documents exist. Its impact on the glyphs can however still be plainly seen in the loops of certain characters such as, and. The earliest surviving versions of the Deseret alphabet, from 1853, one year before its January 1854 approval, have printed in cursive form side by side, suggesting that a cursive form was part of the plan from the very beginning. The cursive form of the Deseret alphabet was mainly used by two people, George D. Watt, and James Henry Martineau. Watt, a stenographer, recorded several bishops' meetings and wrote other personal documents in this cursive style. A chart of the cursive form appears below. The blue glyphs represent how to write each character, while the top row of printed glyphs shows the corresponding Unicode reference glyph. The cursive style has many unorthodox characteristics uncommon to Western writing systems. Vowels can be dropped if the writer is in a hurry and feels the word is obvious as in an abjad, letters can be written above or below the baseline depending on what precedes them, and is placed on letters after they are already written as in an adagita. Furthermore, unlike the typeset alphabet, the cursive alphabet has no letter case. These characteristics could have arisen because Watt was a local expert in Pittman shorthand, which is written in a similar way.
Y. The table below shows some examples of how the cursive form is written. Drop vowels are marked in parentheses. George D. Watt found his own alphabet cumbersome to write and abandoned it. As he wrote to Brigham Young on August 21, 1854. His new alphabet closely resembled an 1853 publication of Isaac Pittman, containing only 33 letters. However, at this point, Young was still enamored with the original Deseret alphabet, and so he rejected the proposal and Watt continued to publicly promote the alphabet as part of his job despite his reservations. After 1855, no more cursive documents appear, and all surviving journals are written in block letters. Marion J. Shelton, an early Mormon missionary who wrote a dictionary of the Hopi language in the alphabet, was a typical 40-letter Deseret writer, and his style of writing is shown below. The Deseret alphabet was purposely designed so as to not have ascenders and descenders. This was envisioned as a practical benefit for the alphabet in an era of metal type, after many uses, the edges of type sorts become dull, and narrow ascenders and descenders are most prone to this effect. While well-intentioned, this lack has been described as a catastrophic mistake that makes type look monotonous and makes all words look alike. Some have drawn comparisons between the alphabet and the old Turkic script, saying that writing in the new alphabet could be mistaken from afar as a Turkish tax list. The Mormon pioneers were apparently aware of the problems caused by its monotony. Other criticism of the design was harsher still. In an December 18, 1857 editorial in the Boston Globe, the alphabet was described as being so arranged and named as to cause the greatest possible annoyance to outsiders and the design of the letters as incomprehensible as, the hieroglyphics of the, Egyptians. On March 4, 1872, the New York Times called the alphabet rude, awkward and cumbersome. Some modern computer fonts and printed books have attempted to correct this perceived fault. In some of the books in John Jenkins' Deseret Alphabet Classics series, the font used adds a descender to an and an ascender to an among other tweaks. Officially, the Deseret Alphabet was created to simplify the spelling of English words for the benefit of children and English as a second language learners. Some of the alphabet's contemporaries, however, posited an alternative motivation for its development, increasing the isolation of the early Mormons. The charge that the Deseret alphabet's main purpose was to keep outsiders, Gentiles in LDS terminology, in the dark was brought almost immediately, as evidenced by the following 1858 Littleton Times reprint of an unnamed New York newspaper. Having obtained a copy of the Deseret News in 1859, the Richmond Dispatch disparaged it on April 25, writing the Deseret News is filled with a lot of hieroglyphs. It seems to be, an alphabet, which the Mormons alone are to be taught. Modern historians, however, doubt the veracity of this theory. For one thing, notes Kenneth R. Beasley, the Deseret News and every book published in the alphabet prominently feature the key to the alphabet, and anyone without a key could have gotten a copy of a journey to Great Salt Lake City, or traveled to Salt Lake City themselves and bought one. Contemporary scholars Richard F. Burton and Jules Remy also dismissed the secrecy argument, in 1860 and 1855 respectively. With the impending completion of the Transcontinental Railroad, the Mormon pioneers would have easy, cheap access to publications from the East, including yellowbacks, penny dreadfuls, pulp magazines, and other often scandalous or dirty publications that were rising to prominence in the 19th century. Indeed, in an article about the benefits of the alphabet, the Deseret News proudly wrote. In another article, the news cited an example of the kind of literature Mormons would benefit from not being able to read. The Police Gazette. Historians A.J. Simmons and Roby Wentz contend that while this may have been a tertiary goal of the alphabet, a sort of happy accident, the main purpose of it was simple orthographic reform. Simmons notes that the teaching of English to foreigners was not a mere hypothetical Damask isolationist tendencies. 35% of the Utah Territory's population at the time was Scandinavian, with German, Italian, and Welsh speaking people also making up a considerable percentage of inhabitants, therefore, Communication between the recently baptized and the community was a real problem. The Deseret alphabet, U plus 10400U plus 1044F, was added to the Unicode standard in March 2001 with the release of version 3.1, after a request by John H. Jenkins of Apple, making it one of the first scripts to be added outside of the basic multilingual plane. The letters, EU, and, OI, were added to the Unicode standard in April 2003 with the release of version 4.0. According to Kenneth R. Beasley, 
who submitted the proposal to expand the encoding. Unicode fonts based on the current heterogeneous collection of glyphs will be useless for any practical typesetting of 40 letter Deseret alphabet documents. This is because the Unicode consortium chose to use glyphs from 1855 as the reference glyphs, while by 1859 those glyphs were already outmoded and replaced with newer glyphs. Feasley thus recommends using LaTeX along with his Metafont font to typeset Deseret text, but fonts which use the alternate glyphs for the two code points in question would also work for transcription of 40 letter Deseret texts written during and after 1859. On February 25, 2016, the Library of Congress approved an ALA LC romanization for the Deseret alphabet. The table can be used to display approximations of titles in non-Latin scripts using the Latin alphabet for use in library catalogs that do not support non-Latin alphabets. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.